So hello everyone, welcome to this challenge. My name is Akshay and let's continue our uh, streak of the next video that is of lecture 6 of our recursion playlist that states for the Josephus problem. So let us understand what Josephus problem is and then we'll look into the solution that how it is related to recursion and how we can solve it. So let me get to the paint section and let me explain you what actually Josephus problem is. So it is nothing but let's say you have these two parameters given n equals to 7 k equals to 3. So it states that there are seven people in a circular in a circle right in a circular track and you have to kill the every kth person in the circle and the last remaining person will be the victorious one and you have to return the number of that the the index of that person right so for n equals to seven i started my uh, i placed the all the persons here starting with the index zero till six right zero till six which means that there are seven persons and what is happening here uh, so for k equals to three what is happening here is the gun was in the hand of the first person. Yes, I mean gun, <laughs> the which you used to shoot a person. So here, the zeroth person have the gun here, gun, and it, it will shoot the kth person, counting from himself. So it will count till three, like zero is standing here, and I will count, this is one, this is two, and this is three. And then the index two will, the index, the person standing to at index two will get shot and will be removed from our game, from our circle, right? So as you can see, in the next step, the two is removed, and as soon as it shoots the third person, it counts, it uh, gives the gun back to the next person, right? So these are the two conditions. So the gun, the gun is there with the number three and it counts from himself that one, two, three. So it will come at index five, like one, two and three. It will come at index five and it will shoot the fifth person and it will pass on the gun to six, right? In the next cycle, the fifth is gone and the sixth will do the same thing. One, two, three. It will shoot the person. You know, standing at the index one, it will pass the gun to the number three, right? So in this three, the gun is here and it will count to one, two, and three, and it will shoot the person at standard six, right? So the sixth is also gone, and the persons remaining are zero, three, and four, right? So the a gun is having at zero, it will count till three, one, two, and three, and it will shoot the person standing at four. Now it will pass the gun again to zero, the next person, right? Though it will count that zero, zero will start the counting one, two, and since the next person is in circular, so three will come again to himself and it will shoot himself, right? <laughs> so that's uh, just the, uh, we are driving the test cases, nobody is shooting here to anyone else. So it will be one, two, and three, and it will shoot himself. And the last person remaining in this circular track will be number three. And that's what we have to return. That is what is our answer. So try to figure out that how this problem is related to recursion and think of, uh, think of the solution right so pause this video and, and resume it once you have a, a maybe an understanding to how to proceed on or you will watch the or you will continue watching the video so okay okay so let's get started with the base cases first and how 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 do we define the base cases we see that the parameters that are using what is the change in the parameters what is the change in the parameters that decides our base cases right so let's say i make a function int int Joseph is int because we need to return an integer, right? So it takes the parameters n and k, right? So k is not changing for any of the cases. It's always the third person. It's always the kth person that needs to be killed. That needs to be flushed out from our circle. So what? So what is changing then? The n is changing whenever an n is changing every time by one person. One person is getting out of the circle, out of the game, right? So last. So th this is where our answer is coming, right? This is where our answer is coming. Then as you can see that. Uh, only one person if remaining in the circle, then I can say that we have reached an answer. You need to stop the recursion. So I can say clearly that if n equals equals to one, return zero, right? Now try to now try pausing the video and think of the full solution. Okay. So we have written the base cases and we need to return this function, function with the parameters like n minus one and k, right? We have to do the same thing, same thing of killing the kth person, but the parameters will change, right? So let me see. That what are all the th things that are changing so adjustments are required right when a new recursive call is made so let me write it for you adjustments required when a new recursive call is made right so what are all those adjustments so what adjustments required in n minus one comma k right if you figure out this thing that we'll be able to do right so what can i say in generally in generalized statement what can i say suppose this is a circle this is a circle and we have this zeroth person here right and one person here and it will it will go to it will go to like k minus one right and then it will go to k 
it will go to k plus 1 and then it will go to let's say n minus 1 here right since we have the n equals to 7 then what we did 0 till 6 right so what i did 0 to n minus 1 now this is changing the kth person is killed here right so the kth person is actually at the index of k minus 1 because it's zero base indexing so this person will be killed right and the next circle passing through will be according to a function it will be that this kth has becoming it be, will become zero and this will become one right because from here this kth minus one it will pass the gun to this position and it will start counting that one two and three and it will kill the third person right you're getting my point i guess so if i update this thing with the uh, new indexes raising the same point so it will be my index one for the second function call right i hope you're getting this point so that's there goes the thing and at last it will be uh, it will be moving like 2 2 2 and, and it will be like n minus 1 right right so what can i say that k is becoming to 0 and what can i say that k plus 1 is becoming to 1 and k plus 2 is becoming to 2 right and k plus i is becoming i i can say that i can say that so using this intuition try to figure out the whole code and resume this video again okay so let's get back to it again so the function which we are calling which are making the function call that seems that we were returning n minus let's let me write here function we are writing n minus 1 comma k and as you can see from here the intuition that if it was it, if it was 0 then i need to return k if it was 1 then the function call should return k plus 1 if it is 2 then k plus 2 and similarly i for k plus i that means that while making the second call i need to write plus k here right as well as i need to handle one more thing that there may be if the index index starting from is 0 to n minus 1 right so suppose if i is equals to n minus 1 and if, if you do plus k there then it will go out of bound right and since this is a circular circular array then we can we can do we can handle that thing by using the modulo n right we can handle that thing so at last while if when we return this function we call this function of n minus 1 comma k plus k we need to do this modulo n so that it do not go out of the bound right and since it's a circular array that's why this modulo operation will work here right so let's see a dry run using the same code that if you are getting to an answer or not so let's do this so I made the dry run for you guys. So we call this function just of 5, 3. So what we did, we call this function of n minus way, comma k plus k percent n, right? So it would be n minus 1, 5 minus 4, that is 3, comma 3 plus k. This is this is all k. This is all k. And at last this is n modulo n. Similarly, 4, comma 3 will give give to 3, comma 3 plus k modulo n, right? And this rest will be copied. Right? Again, for just first of 3, 3, we'll call 2, 3 plus k. This is k again, this is k again, and uh, right, plus k modulo n, right? Right. So in the above case, the n was 3, so that's why this is modulo 3. Similarly, it, we copied the rest of the thing. For 2, 3, it calls for 1, 3 plus k modulo n. n was for the previous function call, it was 2, right? Then again, the same things were copied. And if you solve this function, I've already solved it. You will return an answer of 3, right? So that gives our answer as 3. So I hope this code was very, I made this code very intuitive to you because I explained every ins and out of it. So let's just verify this on this GFG compiler also. Hmm. And before proceeding it to the compiler, so what would be the time complexity? So what I'm doing that for 5 comma 3, I'm calling 4 comma 3 till and then till last when when it goes to 1 comma 3 right so as we can see that i am calling for n to n minus 1 until it goes to 1 so time complexity will be o of n right as well as the space complexity is, will also be there for this recursive for this because we, we are using recursion so it will be recursive stack that is used for for 5 it will store 4 4 will store 3 until and unless at last we'll get the return 0 right so it will be o of n space complexity as well so let's code this thing on the gfg so there's the question here i have mentioned this link in my sheet yes i have mentioned that thing in the sheet so let's do it so i have coded it here as well so the one thing that differs from our uh, the understanding with this question is that they have given they have not placed the uh, they have not the placement of the persons from the zeroth index it always start from the first place right so for as you can see for n equals to 5 and 3 k equals to 3 they are placing the person 1 2 3 4 5 and if you start killing in the direction 
of uh, with one base index in then you will get the answer as four right else you would have get the answer as three similarly for three and k equals to two the zero base index will return the answer as two and the one base index will return the answer as three so this gfd is requirement to return the z one base index and so whatever code we have written we will run the same code just in the answer we will return plus one right because since the index starts from one so that is it let's compile and run and see for ourselves Okay, so expected output and our output matches. So let's just hit the submit button and wait for the results. So that is it, great guys. I hope uh, we are in a clear understanding of what is Joseph's problem and you'll be able to uh, like uh, seamlessly explain it to the interview as well as uh, one. So that's it for today's videos, today video and we will uh, continue our journey for this recursion playlist as well as all the SD topics for the recursion trees, grief, uh, trees graph and DP. So the next uh, video will be updated on subset some problems. So stay tuned. And if you're new to this channel, if you like the content, please share, like, share and subscribe so that I can also with the full energy maintain this playlist of the clip. Bye bye. Take care. Keep learning and keep growing. Take care.